So in this particular example, I like this one. <laughs> this is bad luck, Brian. <laughs> Go skydiving, ignores air resistance. You know why it's uh, silly is because obviously if you ignore air resistance, then you don't have any drag force. Well, that means even if you have a parachute, the parachute won't work because it won't be acting against anything. So if there's no air resistance, you're going to go splat. All right, so let's look at an example here. And we have a glass sphere. And it's got a mass of 0 0.0889 kilos. Um, and it has a radius of 3 centimeters. So watch out for this right here. Already there's going to be something important here. I would say watch out for this. And it moves vertically in a column of ethanol. Okay, so that means that if I drew it, it would be some sort of, just like we had before, some sort of column with some sphere, and it's moving downwards. Okay, so just so we know, there we go. And we've got some facts here. We're told the density of ethanol is this, so it's 785 kilograms per meter cubed. We've got the viscosity of ethanol is 0 0.0011 pascal seconds. The first question is asking, what is the buoyancy force on the sphere? Well, I hope you know, we're just gonna use our buoyancy force equation, FB. So let's look that one up again. So just in case we don't remember it, we can always look it up. And the buoyancy force is rho VG, where V is the volume of the fluid displaced. Keep in mind, that's capital V. Remember, in Stokes law, this lowercase V is the speed of a sphere, they're different. So in this case, I'm gonna have rho VG, so I'll write that down. So I have rho VG. It's always important on an exam to show it, you know what you're doing. So let's just start with that and we'll figure this out. So let's keep going then. So that means FB must be, well, what's rho? Rho is going to be the density, which must be 785. And I could actually put kilograms. You know, I'm going to do just to see the units here. I'm going to do kilogram meters, uh, kilogram per meter cube like this. Then I'm going to multiply that by the volume. Well, what's the volume of the... Um, well, we have to know the volume of the displaced fluid. Now, since it's fully in it, it's fully in this um, column, then we can use the entire volume. Now remember what the volume of a sphere is. It's 4 thirds pi r cubed. And what's r? r is 0 0.03, watch out, because that was really important here, cubed. All that, uh, and by the way, this is going to be units, by the way, are going to be meters, cubed. All that times g, which is just 9.81 meters per second squared. I'm going to put everything like this just to try to see if we can figure out what happens with the units. First of all, meters cubed, those cancel out. That's kind of nice. I'm going to end up with kilogram meters per second squared. Good news, that's a unit of force, so that'll work. Now I've just got to put all these in my trusty calculator. So I'll open it up. I'm got the. I'm going to use the TI Inspire here, but I'm just going to put in my numbers there. So I've got 785. All that times. I'll even do a nice pretty fraction here to make it really clear. So four thirds times pi times the radius, which is 0 0.03, and don't forget to cube that. And all that has to be times uh, 9.81. So if I do that, let's see what I get here. I get point. 870946. So let me just write that down then. So I've got 0 0.870946. Is that what it was? Just double check. 870946. Sure. Now keep in mind, it probably keeps going. So what am I going to do then? I'm going to put my answer. And it's important to think about significant figures here. So the least I'm allowed to use is 2. Right, it seems like, so I'll just use two. So in this case, it's gonna be 0 0.87. That's gonna be it, because these are here won't work. And this one here, by the way, the units are kilogram meters per second squared, which is equal to a Newton. So that means I'll say Newtons here. So this here will be my answer for part A. That's nice, so the buoyancy force is 0.87 Newtons upwards. It's important that I keep all this, because now we have the sphere falls at a constant speed. What does that mean? Constant speed, remember, that's going to mean no acceleration. And if there's no acceleration, that must mean that there's no net force. So I'll put that down maybe, no net force. That's the important thing. That means the, the forces must all cancel out. So that means if I'm looking at this sphere here, okay, here we go, I've got my downwards force, I'll just draw like this right here. My downwards force of Fg, 
and I've got my upwards force of FB, and I've got my upwards force of FD, my drag force. I know this piece of information that's really important, okay? I know then that. So I'll write maybe therefore. I know that the drag force plus the buoyancy force must be equal to the gravitational force. I'm going to use this as a principle to solve this. This is going to be the key idea here, is that I know my drag force and my buoyancy force must be equal to and uh, equal to and opposite to the gravitational force in order for there to be no net force because it's not accelerating because it has a constant speed. So let's find the speed at which it, it falls. Whoops, I just noticed this. I have a spelling mistake. Can you see that? So that's right here, actually. That's all right, I'll fix it now. So there we go. I don't know if you noticed it. I only noticed it now. So let's actually go ahead and do the math for this. So what is the buoyancy force? What's the drag force? And we'll put them all in. So I have an equation for the drag force, don't I? I'm going to put that in here. Remember, the drag force is equal to, uh, well, FD equals 6 pi eta times r times v. So I'm going to do that plus this, and this one here, remember, is going to be just m times g. So I'm going to have that as well. Um, and I have the mass here. So let's put these all in and see what we get. So now I'm going to get, let's see, 6 times pi times the viscosity. Do I have the viscosity? I do. It's 0 0.0011 all that times the radius of the sphere, oh, that's 0 0.03, remember that's in meters, times the speed of the sphere, oh, actually I actually don't know that, that's what I'm trying to find, that's good, all that plus my buoyancy force, now don't use the rounded one, use the full version, so 0.870946 dot dot dot, all that's going to equal m times g, which in this case here is going to be 0 0.088, Eight nine, all that times g, which is 9.81. So I'm going to do all this together and try to get v by itself. So first of all, I'm going to do this times this. I think then what I'm going to do is subtract this and then divide by all this. I think that'll maybe be the nicest way to do it. So I'll do that all on my calculator here. And I'm going to keep this answer here. I'm going to need it. So I'm going to say 0 0.0889 times 9.81. I'll put that in first. I'm going to do that minus this upwards force right here that I had before, right here, this one. Remember, this gives me all the decimals, which is great. I'm going to do that answer, divide it by, in parentheses, I'm going to say 6 times pi times eta, which is uh, 0.0011, all that times 0.03. Because right, what I'm doing, then I'm just getting V by itself. Do you notice then I get V is, uh, well, 1.87029? So I end up with V equals 1.87029. Therefore, the speed at which it falls is going to be approximately, if I'm only allowed two decimal points, then I'll say it's 1.9 meters per second. Phew, there we go, I'm done. So that took a little while. Right, but I think we got there. So the key thing was remembering about all these different forces, right? That if something's at constant speed, okay, no acceleration, sure. And you had to use the buoyancy force and the drag force. And away we went, we figured this out. So you can see in this video, we've talked about buoyancy, drag force, and how to use them.